तो गैस हमारा जो विक्टोरिया मेमोरियल था वो पूरा दिए और नाइट व्यू कंप्लीट कर लिया है तो यह है आउटसाइड का व्यू हम लोग अभी जाएंगे थ्री डी शो देखने के लिए तो हम लोग थ्री डी शो जाएंगे वो वाले ईस्ट गेट से बहुत ही सुंदर शो है आप मिस मत कीजिए इस साइड है दोस्तों बाई साइड है दोस्तों सेंट्रल कैटेज दो और इधर ही आएगा ईस्ट गेट चलिए देखते हैं ईस्ट गेट किधर है गाइज ये देख सकते हैं ये है क्वींस वे वाला जो एग्जिट गेट है जिधर से हम लोग विक्टोरिया मेमोरियल से निकल के आया है तो ये क्वींस वे होके चले आइए एकदम निकल के बिल्ला प्लानिटेरियम के पास बिल्ला प्लानिटेरियम के पास आके एकदम दाएं तरफ मुड़ जाइए दाएं तरफ होके जो रास्ता आप देख सकते हो सेंट पॉल कैथेड्रल के पास आ रहे हैं वो रास्ता पकड़ के सीधा चले आइए इधर तो देख सकते ये है सेंट पॉल कैथेड्रल और उसके ऑपोजिट में एक गार्डन होकर एक रास्ता अंदर जा रहा है विक्टोरिया मेमोरियल के पास तो यह है ईस्टर्न गेट तो इधर से आपको एंट्री लेना है आप को अब जब थ्री डी पोजिशन मैपिंग वाला शो देखने आएंगे देख सकते हैं ये शो का जगह हम लोग इधर जाएंगे तो चलिए अंदर घुसते हैं इसका टिकट आप बुक माई शो से कट सकते हो और या फिर ऑफलाइन काउंटर से भी कट सकते हो सबसे अच्छा है बुक माई शो से कट लीजिए हिंदी बेंगोली और इंग्लिश तीनों शो ही अवेलेबल है तो देखिए ये अच्छा शो है कहीं नहीं देखे है आप लोग गारंटी पता नहीं कितना अच्छा रिकॉर्ड कर रहे हैं लेकिन बेस्ट शो है वन ऑफ द बेस्ट थ्री डी शो आप भी प्राइड फील करेंगे नेता है मोहर कुंज ये जो विक्टोरिया मेमोरियल का जो गार्डन है और गार्डन का और एक गेट है अब गार्डनिंग में जो आएंगे उनके लिए ये रास्ता तो ये है दोस्तों इस साइड सेंट्रल कैथेड्रल और ये जो है हमारा जो थ्री प्रोजेक्ट मैपिंग जो शो है उसका एंट्री ये है हमारा ईस्ट गेट तो इधर से हम लोग एंट्री करेंगे और देखते हैं अभी टाइम हो रहा है छः मिनट देख सकते हैं विक्टोरिया का दिखाई दे रहा है चलिए अंदर चलते हैं हम लोग ने एंट्री ले लिया और ये देख सकते हो हम मैं जा रहा हूँ उधर और अभी जो टाइम हो रहा है वो है कि छः बजकर दस मिनट तो मैं ऑनलाइन टिकट लिया था पता नहीं वो लोग काउंटर से अभी नहीं दे रहे ऑनलाइन वाला अभी अलाउ कर दिया चलिए देखते हैं गैस ये देखिए सारे लोग आ चुके हैं और विश्व शुरू होने वाला है तो गैस देख सकते हो मैं बैठ गया है इधर सारे लोग बैठ चुके हैं इधर अभी शो शुरू होने वाला है पाँच मिनट के अंदर कृपया अपना हेडफोन पहन लीजिए अच्छे तरह से समझने के लिए और आपका साउंड को एडजस्ट कर लीजिए क्योंकि शो का साउंड थोड़ा ज़्यादा होने वाला है तो चलिए देखते हैं शो इस शो का रन टाइम है पच्चीस मिनट तो पच्चीस मिनट तक ये चलता है This is Radio Azad Hind. The time here is 2 o'clock, and in India, 6:30 in the evening. I am an invention of the time. When voice had not begun to ride on airways, wirelessly in the blink of an eye, I can connect with millions of people. Any society, any country, any culture needs the power of a single thought. This voice becomes even more significant for a country fighting oppression. If this voice finds a platform, it has the power to unite people and to take the form of a movement. At that decisive time, I, Radio Azad Hind, was doing just that. This is Subhash speaking. Shh, shh, quiet, quiet. That is Subhash Chandra Bose on the radio. Where is he speaking from? In some unknown land, far away from here. Please keep quiet. Let's listen to what he's saying. Today, we 
we and our country are standing at the crossroads of making world history. My message is for those fellow countrymen who harbor the dream of a free India. I urge you to continue this fight against British oppression till the time our motherland attains freedom from their clutches. Jai Hind! What ensued in 1939 was perhaps the most heinous war in the history of the world, setting up this new records in bloodshed and destruction. On one hand, the Indians were relentless in their pursuit of freedom, and on the other, the Viceroy announced that till such time the world war is on, Indians should refrain from any talk demanding freedom. To oppose this vehemently, chieftains of the Congress parties started turning in their resignations. After having left the Congress, Subhash Chandra Bose was busy fortifying his own organization. His views on the matter were very different. To attain freedom, we will have to take some tough decisions. Non-violence may definitely be a noble and an effective thought. But when it doesn't work, we must look for an alternative. This is a golden opportunity for us. We shall have zero tolerance for British domination. Our motto is all power, the people of this land. Under the defense of India rule, Subhash Chandra Bose was arrested and put behind bars, making his fight for freedom very difficult. The British would either lock him up in jail, send him to some faraway land, or put him under strict and stringent rule. Despite their best efforts, even behind bars, Subhash Chandra Bose contemplated ways of giving wings to the freedom struggle from abroad. The time has come when world politics will have to intervene in our fight for freedom. For this, I will have to escape the four walls of this captivity. Now, I will begin my fast on to death. This non-violent weapon proved highly effective in escaping the jail. However, despite being released, there was no compromise in keeping the strictest vigil on him. A large number of people have been made captive and have taken shelter in Europe. I think we should mobilize them all to wage a war against the British rule. The night of 17 January 1941, with the help of his nephew, Shishir, Subhash escaped from India in the guise of Muhammad Ziauddin. He looked the part in a Sherwani, furry Astrakhani cap and wide bottom salwar or pajama. A man named Akbar Shah helped him in reaching Kabul. After that, he had to choke out his own path in the garb of multiple disguises, using one ploy or the other. Somehow, Subhas Chandra Bose managed to reach Berlin. Such was the struggle for the freedom of his motherland that Subhas Chandra Bose was forced to go miles and miles away from it. 23rd January. 1897, the year of the celebrations of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, was the year that saw the birth of Subhash Chandra Bose at Katak in Bengal province. Who knew that this young Subhash would lead from the front in India's fight for freedom from this Victorian rule? His childhood was mired in conflict. A million questions would swirl in his curious mind. At the age of 15, when he learned about the teachings of Swami Vivekananda, they left a deep and lasting impression on him. Motherland is supreme. We are all brothers, and our liberation depends upon our unity. <laughs> Passing his matriculation, Subhash Chandra Bose joined the Presidency College. Its open and liberal environment appealed to him. He was deeply influenced by the thoughts of Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Aurobindo Ghosh. His curious mind was restless, a buzz with several questions, none of them that he could answer. One fine day, he set off to look for a mentor. He traveled to holy shrines, ashrams, and met many saints and hermits. When his mind was more at peace, he decided to return home. He couldn't find the Guru, 
but his doubts were greatly alleviated. When the thoughts of his beloved motherland and its freedom started filling his mind, his father announced, Subhash, he must go to Cambridge and set for the Indian Civil Service exam. That put young Subhash in a dilemma. But he could not say no to his father and set off for England. Though the academic session at Cambridge was already on, Subhash was admitted midway. He toiled day and night and cleared the Indian Civil Service exam. This led to another dilemma. Should I listen to what my mind says? Or do I walk the path my father wants me to? My motherland needs me. I must go. People will think I'm insane. Let them. Because I must rise up to the cause to free my motherland. After tendering his resignation from the civil services and having met Gandhiji, he set out and got to know Desh Bandhu Chitaranjan Das. In the very first meeting, Subhash was convinced he had found his mentor and guide. He became his compatriot and marched into the freedom movement. <laughs> Let me share an interesting anecdote from the initial days of the freedom movement. There was immense resistance to the Prince of Wales tour of India. Netaji also opposed it vehemently. People were being put behind bars. There was news that Desh Bandhu's wife, Vasanti Devi, had been imprisoned. Subhash immediately reached Desh Bandhuji to convey his solidarity. More than being upset with Vasanthiji's imprisonment, he was angry that he had not been put in jail. He did not have to wait for long. Soon enough, Netaji and Deshbandhu were both locked up in Alipur Central Jail. From then on to the time they remained in India, one or the other jail was their home. Torchbearers who blaze new routes do so by taking the road less traveled. They have no fear of going against the tide. That is how new identities are formed. A change in the language leads to a cultural shift, and that of attire leads to a whole new identity. Under the British rule, the traditional Indian attire was frowned on. To counter this, Subhas changed the Calcutta Corporation employee's uniform to Khadi and named Calcutta's roads after eminent Indian luminaries. All this led to huge popularity amongst his followers. This could not be tolerated by the ones who ruled. Under a flimsy accusation of political conspiracy, they had Netaji arrested and put behind bars in Mandalay jail. This was a matter of great pride for him. This is the very jail that was home to freedom fighters like Lokmanya Tilak and Lala Lajpat Rai. Mandalay to me is not a jail, but a shrine, and I am on a pilgrimage. Mandalay was less of a jail and more of a torture cell. It was a Buddha devotee. As soon as the rain struck, all the water would flood. and we wouldn't know where to sit or what to do. Sarash battered pneumonia and deteriorating health with a brave face. Finally, after three years, he stepped out as a confident leader. India's youth looked up to him with admiration. His presence infused new energy in them. While Gandhiji was sitting in isolation and reflecting, Subhash was actively leading the freedom struggle from the front. He got all the mill workers to join hands and opposed the Simon Commission. He led mass movements to boycott goods of foreign origin. All this made him immensely popular among the labor and the youth. Subhash may have solved the dilemma with his father, but when it came to the freedom struggle, the one on the other side was none other than the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. On the banks of the river Vyas, with the Indian flag atop, Gandhiji proposed complete independence for India. Subhash 
stood up. You are not ready for complete disobedience. Mere boycott of councils shall achieve nothing. I believe all or nothing. In my opinion, till Dalits, the labor class and all the marginalized do not join hands. All efforts of civil disobedience shall be in vain. Even though Gandhiji's proposal of civil disobedience was accepted, the battle lines of their difference of opinion had been drawn. Subhash was arrested, and though released a year later, he was put behind bars yet again. His health started deteriorating at an alarming rate while in Sibni jail in Madhya Pradesh. Instead of being released, he was sent off to recuperate in Vienna. It was bizarre. Subhash's presence in India sent shivers down the spines of the rulers. In the year 1938, while he was in England, he heard that he had been chosen as chief of the Congress party. Brimming with new ideas and dreams for a bright future, he announced in the session at Haripura in Gujarat. My friends, there is no such power on this earth that is strong enough to defeat India. And we shall make it true in the times to come. Subhash was a young man, full of new thoughts and ideas for the India he dreamt of. He wondered how India would surge ahead and make economic progress. How would India march shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the world? Sadly, even among his own people, Subhash started being looked at with suspicion. When he was chosen as the Congress party chief for the second term, several party members tendered their resignations. Gandhiji was also upset that Sita Ramaya did not win the elections and called it his own personal defeat. The differences between Gandhiji and Subhash deepened even more. Netaji extended an olive branch and went to meet Gandhi. However, their differences could not be resolved. Subhash Chandra Bose had to go to the Tripuri Congress session in Madhya Pradesh despite being very ill. Because of constant internal party conflict and the suffocating environment it created, Subhash decided to resign as President of the Congress in the meeting at Calcutta in April 1939. The Congress lost an enthusiastic, visionary and far-sighted leader. Subhash was pained by the thought that after 20 years of making freedom for his motherland his only mission, he was still looked at with suspicion. At this time, he went to meet Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, whose words soothed his aching soul. I can see you standing at the same crossroads where you had begun your political journey. You are at the juncture where I see you as the torch bearer carrying forth the beacon of light of hope for the motherland. In this crucial hour, there is absolutely no room for self-doubt. Although I may not be there to join you in this fight for freedom, but rest assured, my blessings are always there with you. I am happy to see that you have made the country's sorrow and its fight for freedom your very own. This strengthens my conviction that this shall bear fruit and we shall reap the reward of a free country very soon. You have done the noble deed of infusing a new energy, a new hope in our minds and souls. As a tribute, I dedicate my new play, Tashir Desh, to you. Took the Indian prisoners of war on board 
and laid the foundations of the Indian National Army. The radio was immediately adopted as the most modern medium for reaching out to people, and hence came about the Azad Hind Radio. My friends, the time for India to be free has arrived. India shall rise and break free from the clutches of the chains of slavery that have held her captive for ages. Asia and several other countries of the world are marching forward to help us. Singapore had been captured by the Japanese. In the middle of all this, Netaji traveled by sea in a submarine and reached Japan. In their very first meeting, Prime Minister Tojo promised to lend unconditional support to Subhash Chandra Bose. The soldiers of the Azad Hind Ford stood tall and proud. They were willing to lay down their lives for the sake of their motherland at a single command from Netaji. We have to fight for our freedom with our blood and our weapons. We must have an army ready in place as soon as India gains independence. We must lay such a foundation that we never have to lose our freedom ever again. My brave hearts, your mission should be to march ahead to Delhi. Delhi Chalo! The Azad Hind force was still incomplete without half the population. The brave women of the country, the freedom struggle was incomplete. To address this, Subhash laid the foundations of the Rani Chansi Regiment. This became the all woman battle squad of the Azad Hind Force. It was the March of 1944. Soldiers of the Azad Hind Forge responded to General Kiani's war cry, Jai Hind, Chalo Dindi, and traveled all the way to attack in fire. The Azad Hind Forge soldiers unfurled the tricolor at the Indian border. Across that river, beyond this forest, nestled behind those hills, lies the India of our dreams. Our sacred motherland, where we were born, and into her arms we are longing to return. Blood is calling out to its own brethren. Rise, pick up your weapons, and surge ahead to Delhi. Chalo, Dilli Chalo. The farm was only 10 kilometers ahead. Suddenly, out of nowhere, it started raining heavily. The soldiers who were marching ahead to the embassy had to stop midway. Constant downfall from the hill to rain posed a huge challenge to their logistics. On the other hand, British and American forces were constantly attacking in the air. Despite tasting momentary victory, the Argentine army soldiers were forced to retreat. American bombers were decimating them from the skies. More than 25,000 Argentine soldiers Nintaji returned to Bangkok to the rest of the army. Friends, we may have lost this battle, but this was just the beginning. There will be many more when we will have to rise up to give a tough fight. Whenever there will be a mention of India's independence, Azad Hind Forge shall always find a place in golden letters. The momentous chapter in our crusade for independence came to a tragic end. Unfortunately, it led to the end of Netaji's campaign, despite the many sacrifices he had made for the freedom of his mother. However, in the eyes and hearts of his ardent followers, Netaji was still alive. This faith and resolve of the Indians shook the foundations of British rule in India, whether it was the Indian National Army trial at the Red Fort in 1945, or the Royal Indian Navy revolt from Karachi to Calcutta in 1946, the British were haunted by Netaji's legacy. The war that Netaji and the Indian National Army waged against the British eventually led to India's freedom on 15th August 1947. Indians remain eternally grateful for Netaji's immense contribution to India's independence.
इंस्ट्रूमेंटल बज रहा था वो थोड़ा ज़्यादा था साउंड लेकिन ओवरऑल आई एम वेरी सेटिस्फाइड एंड शो ख़त्म हो गया ये 25 मिनट का शो था तो अभी जा रहे हैं बस पकड़ने तो ये जो थ्री डी मैपिंग शो होता है इसका ऑडिक शो आता है ये सेवन फिफ्टीन में तो आई होप यू गैस एंजॉयड अगर फ्यूटर एप वाला ब्लॉग नहीं देखा तो वाला भी देख लीजिए पार्सिस वाला ब्लॉग भी देख सकते हो और म्यूजियम वाला ब्लॉग भी देख सकते हो चलिए आज के लिए इतना ही मिलता है अगले से वीडियो में तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए मेरा चैनल है संदीप संदस चलिए अलविदा गुड नाइट